Hello and welcome to PPW5. I'm Liam Slater and I'm the head coach down here at PPW and I massively appreciate you clicking on this video and spending your time with us. Now PPW5 is our in-house dress rehearsal show and basically what that means is it's a chance for people who have never made the debut in a professional wrestling ring, are trying out new characters and gimmicks or just really want to refine what they're doing in a professional wrestling ring in a safe environment in front of their peers so they can really hone their craft before taking it out into the wider world world of professional wrestling. Now with that, we've done four previous installments out of this and just time by time they've been getting better and better. And quite honestly, I feel a little bit guilty that they're just sat on my hard drive not being viewed by the people that they should be being viewed by, which is exactly why I've put this video together. Now, if you like someone, if someone really stands out to you, let us know down in the comments below exactly who you think is a future star within the world of professional wrestling. And with all that out of the way, I just want to say thank you again. And I'm going to hand over to JPR, who's in ring, getting us ready for the action today. Good afternoon, Sheffield! Yay! My name's the urban legend, JPR, and welcome to PPW. Five. Our first match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Entering first. I hate Phil Collins. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Let's just let's just let's just kick that right off. Right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most charismatic shooter of them all? Oh, why it's you, 2000 man. Not any of these pissants that are looking at right here today. Ooh. It's been 200 days since the first steps inside of a pro wrestling ring that took the first bump right here at Pursuit Pro Wrestling. And in that time, I have been operating on a whole other level. Some would say I've been changing the game. So I'm out here to issue a challenge, and no, it's not to any of you, because quite frankly, none of you deserve to be in this ring with me. But it's to one Liam Slater. So Liam, if you're hearing me right now, I don't know if you can or not, I just want to say that I am grateful for everything that you've done for me so far, and all the time and effort that you've put into me, but you and I both know, I can't wrestle all these charisma vacuums that can't slap a headlock on properly. It's been too easy! So here's what I'm gonna do. I am not leaving this ring until you get out here. And in fact, I'll stay here all night and all the matches can fucking go. I do not care. This is about me, this is my moment, and I am technically superior. You might be Liam Slater, but I'm the 2000 man, and that's that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Let's go, the audience is behind me all the way, totally. Absolutely. Total respect. Why, why wouldn't you when, when Tom Bryce has refused to take off that, that audacious headwear that he's got on there? You can see it if you were, and it's very, very bright, Tara. Oh, Wait oh, a minute. <laughs> well, Maybe too bright that. for uh, for PPW. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll get that, get that out of there. Here we go. I mean, we're going to get to see some technical ability. Call an elbow tight. Arm drag takeover. Tom Bryce, technically superior, but didn't see that one coming. Sure you want this, Bryce? Slater was uh, getting the upper hand, starting off the match straight away. I guess we could have uh, seen this coming, but uh, I don't know. Would you think we would have seen this coming? <laughs> yes, uh, Tom Bryce has changed. Tom Bryce, Tom Bryce is arrogant. Well, let's get that straight. Tom Bryce is an arrogant man. But there's a difference between arrogance and knowing that you are technically superior. So and that kind of overconfidence sometimes can just take you <laughs> take you in the wrong direction, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you might just pay off today. Perfect. Off the rope. Yeah. 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 
one, Bryce. Getting out, getting out of the ring. Now, this this is a good way to create some separation. Also, get in the head of your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Bryce having a bit back and forth with the crowd. It does seem to be uh, uh, connecting in a kind of a different way with the audience. Absolutely. Yeah. He's a pretty tall guy looking at him. Head lock. Yeah. 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 Two. Two there. Probably in Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. It is going to be back and forth with the Canada of the whole yeah. yeah. You can see this happen. Hey. I believe we're going to have a good match. Hey. Absolutely. So hey. Tom Bryce does have a very hey. great technical hey. background and a great hey. technical mind for yeah. yeah. But as I said before, William Slater hey. taught him everything he knows yeah. about professional yeah. wrestling. Hey. Yeah. It's how much he can bring, uh, how much Tom Rice can bring into wrestling. How can he, you know, adapt that, like you said? That's over here. Two counts. From face left. And then transition into the vertical suplex there from one to One more time. Some good technical power there. The audience out here with him. Slater at the minute is on top of this match. He is. It looks like he's going for that suplex again, but no, Tom Rice straight to the shoulder there. Now you don't want to hyperextend that shoulder because Tom Rice will put you in an armbar. And that will end the match. Looks like targeting the area now. Absolutely. Going for it. Yep, there's the cross arm bar attempt there. We're walking the fingers to prevent the arm extension. Second in predicament. One, two, two. Big power bomb there. Big power bomb to break, break Tom off that arm. Looks like we're going to be having some kind of Submission battle here, music man. So Tom, Tom Price going for the arm. William partial to that single leg box and crap. It is. It. it seems like it's going to be like that. But are we going to see some kind of old school wrestling? Also, are we going to get some powerful moves, some slams? Are we going to see more of that? Or will Tom Price just rely on uh, his martial arts background here? Yeah, I, I believe. I believe Tom Price. Tom Price is probably going to stick to to that shooting style. Probably going to try and isolate that arm again. But I think William. Being the stronger of the two men, he's going to try and outpower him. Yeah, I think there's going to be more uh, wrestling ability in there. And he's got the audience here, right behind him. So, yeah, look at fingers. That small, small joint manipulation there. Now, that's not allowed in any other form of, of fighting. Uh, but in professional wrestling, we do allow that. So going for a triple here, looks like maybe. Four over. Oh, no, no. Over there. Oh. See now that is that 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 judo influence there of Tom Bryce with that with that shoulder. Hey, hey. This is the instant it automatically kicks in and uh. There we go. Hey, we need to the face. Here. Come on, that can't be. Right. That can't be right. Absolutely, he he is he is still trying to get that cross arm there. He sweeps his left leg over and leans back. This could be the end of the match. But it looks like right, William's got the defense for this. Coming up. Oh. First, first strike of the match. And it, it doesn't seem like that, that strike uh, had much of an effect on him here. He's, I believe he's asking for it there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Energy Come on. Building up here. Give me it, bro. Yeah. If you Come want to have a four off with someone, yeah. Liam Slater's yeah. not the one to do that with. Definitely not the person you want to get into a strike trade off with. One more time. Come on. 
Give me one big one. What you got, guys? Huh? I'm looking for. There you go. And again, again. That's the that's the that's the power of William Slater. Watch these European uppercuts in the corner. Taking him down, trade away. And we go. One, two, push, fix, cover. The audience are behind uh, William Slater right now. Absolutely. Oh, oh you've got a single leg power yeah. bomb by the look of it. Now, that is not where you want to get tied up because if your feet get stuck in that rope. Oh, Tom Bryce looking for. No, there's a cover. He was going for that rear naked choke there. Close one. That's the end of the match. That's the end of the match. Yeah. Three? You sure that was a three? Three. All right, okay. Ooh. Tell you what, hey. One, two. All right, big mouth. I was just about to put you over there, but you know what, maybe not. As good of a wrestler as you are, you got cocky. And you best watch yourself, because you could, with that cockiness, will do you wrong down the line. Okay, you were close there. I'll admit that. Doesn't matter about how close you get. It's about being the winner. But anytime you want to go again, if you want to put that cockiness to his side, I'm happy to go. save you mate. Look, I can save you. You can join me. Join this crusade that I'm on. You know it. I know it. Society's a bit knackered right now. Join me on your knees. Let's go and do this. Yeah? Yeah? You saved me? Save it me. does seem to be that he's playing along with this. Oh! <laughs> I can't Big believe myself for that. <laughs> Probably the most unpredictable what man in PPW. You, you? <laughs> you can't be playing games like that with him. You, you don't play, you can't play games with a clown. Yeah, it's a dangerous world out there for that. He does have something down his sleeve or somewhere. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> this is what I mean about making me uncomfortable with that laugh. Wow. Very terrifying. Well, we're underway right now. Enough to see. It's, it's crazy today to see with see with freaky Felicia not by his side see how Axel the Clown fail, fares without him seems to be doing okay just now <laughs> I wonder if you'll have any more tricks uh, 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 to pull out there William Valor on the outside now to take a moment to regroup he is not a loved man here at PPW come here Valor come on oh. I think there's a, uh, definitely something there Hopefully he's not doing a home baking with that at this time. Definitely had his bell rung on that one. A strong strike there from William Valor. That's one thing that sets him apart, this brawling, smash mouth style. Now yeah, Axel the Clown, he's got to be used to uh, dealing with a lot more than that, being the circus or wherever. Oh, the man you know, can take a beating. Freak show, man, he can take it. He can take a beating. Not only can, William, can Axel the Clown take a beating, but he'll laugh at you while he does it. And he is still laughing away, even after taking that shot to the head there. Absolutely terrifying. How do you beat a man that laughs while you beat him? <laughs> that is a good question, man. I think that's going to that's gonna stay in your mind for a long time. He's going to be getting in the head of William Valor. It's not a matter of time at that point until he makes a mistake. And then what happens? Where does this match go? He seems to be focused right now. Seems to be coming around here in the headlock. We do have people moving out of the way. <laughs> this could go anywhere, man. Oh, he seems to be straight into the wooden sideboard there. It is. And he's still laughing. <laughs> William Valor throwing everything he can at Axel the Clown, but he's still laughing at him while he does it. He's going up, he's going up high. Going up there to the top area. Oh. 
Like a double hex handle there off the top of the uh, jumping horse thing, whatever it was. And they're back in the ring now. I'm not done yet. And he is still laughing, still He's laughing away. Really? Nothing seems to uh, face axle the minute. It's like the more he gets beat, the more he, the more he enjoys it. And the more it makes him stronger. It is, he's absorbing, he's absorbing all that uh, uh, pain in the laughter. The the oh. oh. has a title. Bumbag belt there. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, this could be. Uh, oh no. Yeah, that's not thumbtacks. That's worse than thumbtacks. Oh, yes. That's worse. <laughs> that's worse than that. Oh no, no. This is not for the faint hearted. You've seen Home Alone. This is not Micro Machines. This is Lego, man. It's going to look bad. Or as we call them, Legos. Oh no, 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 no. No. <laughs> As a parent, ladies and gentlemen, if you have ever stood on Lego, you can just imagine a fraction of the pain that Axel Ray must be in right now. And he's still laughing about it. <laughs> the takeaway here, that man just landed on Lego and he is laughing. And that, that was more than a cup or two, that was. Not only is he laughing, but he's back up and on top. A serious amount of Lego. I don't know if Alori is going to be getting some of that soon for himself. Uh, That's an expensive amount of Lego. Lego isn't cheap now. Oh! It sure is, man. The most expensive bump that PPW has ever seen. Two. Two. Somehow, William Valor kicks out. I think I'd have just given up there. Man, you don't want to get one of those Legos in your eyes, man. It's going to take you out there, I tell you. Man, can you imagine going to the hospital uh, asking, well, you know, remove of the Lego in the eye there? It's flying here, there, and everywhere. Seems to be some retaliation now. If Lego wasn't enough, stop the insanity. It looks like he's taking him to the National He's going to whip him down to size. Point to be made here. And he's got the bacon tin and on top of the legos there. <laughs> now that Axel is on top. Oh, Mary Barry no would never approve of this. Now he's on top and now he's on, he's on top of the match. He's no longer laughing. He's focused. He's deadly. You believe that that man will cause pain. He sure is. He's very focused. He's a clown with a plan. This is the day it was. about a... Uh, 50, uh, did you say 50 pounds worth of Lego falling out of her, uh, the last hell there? Uh, wow. Oh, it's close. But it's Valor close just enough. on the ropes there. Little kick out with just what he had left. Axel must be wondering what he's got to do now. He registers the fact that the, cr the crowd are behind him. What's he got? What's he got important in mind now? He's having a rummage under the ring, oh. and something's coming out here. Oh. Oh, it looks to be a PPW sign, maybe a homemade one there going on there. It doesn't look like, like the official ones, but uh, he's got that PPW board set up in the turnbuckle. He's making a point. Oh. Spear into it by William Muller. That's it. It's over. If he can pull him in. You can pull him in, that's it, he's done, he's done. One, two, and three. That's Still it. Still coming back from there. And the winner of this match, William Velour. <laughs> it's Bally, you idiot! I apologize. <laughs>
Well, it beats being a clown in the middle of the ring, doesn't it? Oh, but no. here's the thing, we, we knew this match was going to happen. We knew this match was going to happen, and we thought it would be the perfect opportunity to show Kyle Kennedy what Pursuit Pro Wrestling was all about. Do you know what he did when he was watching that there? He yawned. Is that why he didn't come out? Oh, no, that's not the reason why. He thought that there was a better caliber of wrestlers here. He thought, he's only just started. He thought there were going to be better individuals out here. Not some failed crusader and a member of the insane clown posse over here. But regardless, regardless, we can help spice things up right now. <laughs> How about it? Yeah. Me and Decaro, don't worry, don't have to worry about Kyle for this one. Me and Decaro against the two of you, surely. Surely you can put on a better show for Kyle right here, can't you? Kyle. Come on. You can do that, can't you? Unless you're afraid of being beaten again like the last time we met. Shut up. Man down right now. Seems like they won the challenge. There's a certain aura about these men that you, just, you can't help but listen. They're never going to play fair, you know. They're never going to uh, have a bit of honor in that ring. They, be they believe in what they're saying. They believe in their cause. They believe in the society. And that's the biggest step when you're forming a group. Is you need to believe in the cause. You need to believe in what Come you're on, talking about. And you, there is a believability. There is an understanding that these men mean this is Straight in. Straight in with a diamond cutter. Oh, thank God the Legos were grabbed. He doesn't even pin him. He's not done yet. They're just here to make a point, Dave. That's all they're here for. They don't care about winning. They're just here to cause pain. A huge elbow there. From the car oh, a knee to the face there. This whole thing, seemingly, from the society is to show Kyle Kennedy, the newcomer, what it is at PPW, what they mean at PPW, proving a point almost. With a huge knee to the back of William Valley at Valor's head. A shift in personality, it seems, in the last 10 minutes from William Valley. A change. It sure does. It's, uh, it's more of a survival or uh, instant kicking in there, but like you say, these guys are just like a pack of wolves. They're never going to work on them. They're always going to do something as the society as they are. It's a dark thing to be. The society just picking apart. Absolutely fantastic teamwork here. Absolutely picking apart William Ballard. Axel Ray screwing on the outside, ready to get in. They're doing a great job in keeping in that corner away from, uh, away from Axel's side, you know. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to play this through the match there. Another point for this match. He shows where Axel Ray laughs when he's getting beaten. But when his tag partner is so a man that, was, that he went to war with just five minutes ago. William Vell is now getting attacked. He's getting broken down, dissected by the society. Axel didn't find that funny at all. And maybe that uh, the, the, the change has just made a change within Axel himself, and uh, he is now full-on partner mode here. Real momentum shift in this one. Will he be able to keep the line? Will he be able to keep that or Will he get back into his head and be back Axel the Clown? You know what? This is the big difference here. This is the big difference here so far. So the society are a unit. They're a team. They're a family. They're a group. Axel and Valor literally beat the hell out of each other five minutes ago. Huge lariat there, out of nowhere from William Valor, taking him down. Both men down in the middle of the ring, Valor using what was left of his energy there, ladies and gentlemen. But it was enough to create some distance, and now we might see Axel the, the Clown get in. Can, it, can he make the tag? He makes the tag, Picaro in two. Axel Ray's rolling, two, two big clotheslines. Into the corner with an elbow. Knocks him down. Oh, and he's laughing again now. That laugh has returned. He's comfortable again. He's rolling. Yes, he's there. 
You talk about what I talked about earlier, just how dangerous a society are. I don't think that they're ready for just how dangerous Axel the Clown is when he's on a roll. I'm taking William Valor back in after the beating he takes is a questionable move here from Axel the Clown. <laughs> see, see if this pays off. What a spear! What a spear! The moves are taken down Axel Ray just 10 minutes ago. One, two. Oh, he's out of there. Kyle Kennedy getting involved. He wasn't. In, he's not in this match. The referee is absolutely livid. They're Axel to the out. outside to take out Kyle Kennedy, but it's not enough. Absolute carnage here at ringside. A massive low blow from DeCaro to Valor. This could be the end. Society using their teamwork once again. When things got sketchy, the teamwork prevails. Here's an Axel the Clown is nowhere to be seen. Could he be under the ring in the classic doinkness? Or will he be coming out of here or not? Locks in that sleep hold. We've seen this taken down many amount of PPW. Oh, no. Axel's back up though. Can he get in? Oh, What's that in his hand? What's that in his hand? He's trying, but he's... He's trying to get back in with what energy he has left, but it's too late. It's too late. Valor is out. Very, very big mix of styles here. Such a great ability here, Dave. And uh, of course, uh, Leon is so young as well, but he, he is just, it's, it's not gonna matter. He, uh, he is, uh, he's rocking it in here. But then again, the experience will pay off, definitely. Uh, and Radio has the experience. That's the whole thing, isn't it? The ex yeah, the ex Radio has the experience on his side, absolutely. Radu has the experience on his side here for sure. He's, he's, he's been wrestling for over 12 years. He's, he's wrestled all over the country. He's wrestled some of the best that the country has to offer. But I bet he wish he had a fraction of the skill, ability, and just outright willpower that Leon Slayer shows at his young age. It's unbelievable at that age. The energy that he has is, uh, yeah. It, it's infectious, the audience. The, you know, they're, they're loving it. It's an energy, it's a likability. As soon as you see this man, you can't help but cheer. He's being worked down, as I said, as I, as I alluded to earlier. Radu Bullat is a very technically gifted wrestler. He knows how to take a man down and keep him there. He's, he's got... He's got a lot of hold, he's got a lot of moves in his arsenal that, that can keep this man down. But I don't think he's faced a man quite like Leon Slater in a long time. I believe that these two men really will take each other to the limit here today. There's going to be a huge amount of technical ability there, but will he be over a, a power to power kind of a situation? Here? Because uh, Radu does have a lot of power. Uh, I wouldn't like Leon's chances going toe to toe in a strike off with Radu Bullard. He's got one of the strongest forearms I've ever taken in my life. But at the minute, they've just they've got an answer to everything that they throw at each other. It's hold for hold, move for move. This is the energy and likability of Leon Slater that I was talking about. But again, Radu Bullard takes it straight back down again. And a big drop kick there from Leon Slater. It is indeed. Radu re regrouping yeah. to the outside there. Both in excellent condition as well. Looks like, uh, it is quite in a way evenly mixed in some of the Absolutely peak here. condition from both gentlemen. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't want to spend your time, spend well, too much time on the outside because Leon will come and get you. <laughs> No water in the pool there for Leon. Took a chance. That's a, this is the thing with this high risk style. You take a chance, sometimes it doesn't pay off. You've got to be ready for that. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, which one of the two are going to get the better of the high abilities here. We've got some high flyers on both ends. Let's talk about that high flying ability. Leon's going up top. This is where he's most dangerous. He's getting ready to fly. Just in time, yeah. And that is where the experience 
comes in from Radu Bulat. He knew what was coming. He's done his research. Just picks him out of the sky. Again, that strike power that I mentioned as well. Massive forearm straight to the jaw of Leon Slayer. Yes, Radu is uh, he is on the uh, the upper part of this, but he seems to be so relaxed in the ring as well. I guess that's going to be to do with your experience. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's relaxed in the ring. He's almost at home. The question is, will Leon get out of this? He seems to get that lock in there pretty tight. Radu using his technically gifted, technically superior style. As I said, I said at the start of the match, he's going to keep him. He's going to take him to the ground. He's going to keep him there if he lets him. And then he's got those strikes if it doesn't go to, to plan. It's a devastating forearm there. Honestly, I felt those forearms, and it is like the life leaves your body. There is nothing nice about it. He's a big guy. He is a pretty well built. Good kick there from Leon Slater. Getting back into it. He's going to go up top again. He's going up here. It looks, uh, it looks too pretty. Oh. Another big, big forearm there from Radu takes Leon down. He's out of the ring at the minute. Throws him to the outside. Clearly staying in the ring isn't enough for Radu, but like, wants to inflict as much pain as possible. Radu is cold, he's conniving. Huge bump into the apron there. Rush, side rush and leg sweep into the cut into the apron. And Leon Slater is down. Radu takes a moment to draw Jack at the crowd. Let the crowd know what he thinks of them. He's happy to just wait for the count out at this point. Oh, he's back in there. <laughs> Big soccer kick there to Leon Slater's back. Gets a two count, it's not enough. Not enough to take down the heart and determination that Leon Slater possesses. You're going to have to beat him down a lot more than that to take him down for the three count here today. Quick roll up there from Leon though. One, two. That's how, how quickly a match can change. Radu unhappy there. Doesn't like the unpredictability that Leon has here on the show. I said earlier you don't want to go strike you want to go toe to toe with in strikes with Radu Bullard there's only one winner Again, the power but Radu's has never faced there. Radu has never faced someone with the heart and determination that Leo Slater has he's always got something up his sleeve just like that big Enzo Gyuri there Radu is down I believe, Lewis, that's the first time that Radu's been down this whole match. <laughs> it seems to be so. He's, uh, he's been standing tall up there. Still seems, uh, yeah. Really relaxing on it. This is where Leo really starts to get rolling. If Radu allows him to get rolling, there's only going to be one winner here. This is where he's comfortable. This is where he's in his zone. Look at that fast pace. Look at the agility on show here. Taken down. 
the experience again. Again, it's the experience on show from Radu. Leon yeah, is just countless. The, the energy oh! on this. It's coming out of this kid. It's unbelievable. Wow. Now the audience is behind him. Both men are uh, slowly. Are they going to get to their feet? Starts to feel like a handicap match when you're in there, Lewis. When, the, when you've got the crowd behind you, it almost feels like a two on one scenario. <laughs> when you've got that crowd, you've got that extra energy, man, I can imagine. It's got to be unbelievable. That is a 0.01%. Leon Slater over the turnbuckle onto the outside, taking Radu down. Now he's showing he means business. Radu, again. Radu showing his experience there, taking, taking himself to the corner, thinking he was safe. But nowhere is safe when Leon's flying. Reversal there from Radu. Oh! Huge kick to the face there from Radu Bullard takes him down. There's something else, but to the face. This really has been a fantastic match, but uh, they can only be one winner. There can only be one winner at this rate. I genuinely believe it's going to be the first man to make a mistake that comes away from the, with the, comes away with the L here. This is where Radu starts rolling. If you could start letting him get these strikes in, the next thing that's coming is that big, oh, devastating Radu. double stomp. Uh, it's going to be high flyer versus high flyer. Yeah. Oh. Huge knee there Whoever from the Romanian the sniper. <laughs> Taking down Leon Slater to the outside. <laughs> Radu getting confident now, you can see it in his eyes, that confidence is back, the frustration is there, you can see the frustration in his face, he's starting to wonder what he needs to do to put this young kid away. There's an aura of confidence again, he's rolling, he's confident, he knows what he needs to do. this one in the bag. Is he setting him up here? the counter there. That energy from Leon. Unbelievable. He got him with that one. Can he get the cover? Not going for the cover, he's gonna go up top again. This is the whole high flyer versus high flyer thing. He gets this in, it's gonna be over. Oh, my plain possum. And he is, I do is back up. And they're up there. This really could go anywhere. What the fuck? Leon sees an opportunity, you know what's coming next. That man's gonna fly! That's it, it's over. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Leon Slater. If there's one thing this is going to be, it's going to be hard hitting. Absolutely. I'm starting off some grappling here, though. It seems like they're, seems like they're feeling each other out just to... Already going for the nose there. See, Jack Marshall will take as many shortcuts as possible. And that's what I like about him. He's efficient, so they get stuff done. Look at that with fingers there already bending them. It might be efficient, but there's still something to be said about actually playing to the rules and still being efficient, which is what it looks like Jay Vertico is going to be like here. A nice, beautiful flip and reversing that lock on Jet. Just fantastic. This is what you expect. Um, and they do have a um, they do have some techni techniques in the locker, but obviously Jet Marshall taking no li liberties there and going straight for the kick to the back.
It is exactly how I said it was going to be. It is just the start of it. That one kick there is going to set the precedent for the rest of this match, I reckon. You can hear the crowd going, and that's already annoying Jet Marshall. He will feed off the crowd and all the energy and use it against them at any opportunity. Already breaking that hold there with the fingers once more. A very efficient use of the fingers, like you said earlier. Efficient. He's got in there a nice, beautiful lock. And Jay is breaking out. Ooh. Ooh, he's got him in a headlock right there. His beautiful reversal right there. No need for complications when it comes to this stuff. Jet Marshall was there going for the uh, going for the Japanese um, necktie um, position. Coming straight in, flying for the crucifix position. Straight out onto the ropes there. It was unfortunate placement right there. If it was a bit closer into the middle of the ring, he might have got that pin, but because he was touching the ropes there, he had to break it up. For sure, far too much energy though, too early, um, Jack Marshall. Um, testing the strength here, look at this. Two very even, oh, this is exactly how I knew it was going to be. Even if they did go for it, it would have been interesting to see with them both being very similar statues right there. Oh, nice shoulder block from Jack Marshall, and a nice kip up, and a shoulder block again. Sent him straight back down, Jet Marshall, with the attitude as usual. Let's see what happens. Whip switch into a back switch into an RVD. Get that fantastic stop. Oh, sent him. Beautiful, beautiful arm drag and a beautiful drop kick right there. He's to stop pandering to the crowd, though. He's got a very tough opponent right in front of him. He's got a very tough opponent, but he seems like he's not stopping his offense. Oh, and returns that kick earlier straight to him. Oh, but a kick out at two. Standing moonsault, too. Absolutely incredible stuff to watch. Let's see what he's up to now. Let's see, see what Jay Vertigo's going to go for. Ooh. It doesn't matter what he's going to go for. Oh, Jet reversed it and a nice hard chop around his chest. The murder baby himself going at it and going after it. I felt that in my soul. I've not been on the receiving end of those chops, but I know people who have, and each and every one of them has said it's been one of the worst experiences I've been through in terms of chops. Absolutely textbook there from Jet Marshall. Hard hitting, exactly what you expect when it comes to a match for him. Um, it's, oh, it's like, look at that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Immediately answering back, he does not back down. Nice, uh, nice little kick there, straight into the corner. Oh, he's choking him on the corner. Clearly bending the rules right here, but as long as it benefits him, it doesn't seem to matter. He has got until five. He has got until five, and let's see what's going on here. He's hooking him for a suplex. Oh, get that fantastic stuff. Sent on. Love to see it. One, two. But a kick out at two. Oh, he's, oh. Not exactly PG from Jet Marshall there, but I imagine he doesn't really care. He's just there for the victory and nothing else. For sure, he's here for a scrap, here for a fight, here for the victory. Hard hitting again. Immediately answered back by Jay Vertigo there. Well placed kicks. Is it really a competition he wants to go into with Jet Marshall? Is he's known for his stiff hard strikes? Is that a competition that Jay can win? Definitely not, in my opinion. He needs to stick to what he does normally. He needs to go to the top rope. He needs to fly like he usually does. Nice kick out at two there. For sure, definitely. Oh, get him biting on the hand. No messing about there from Jet Marshall. Clearly somebody's not had their breakfast this morning, but regardless, moving on. Jet Marshall setting him up. What's he going to go for here? Ooh, top rope move of his own, but never mind. Oh, a top rope DDT straight onto Jet Marshall from Jay Vertigo. That was impressive right there. Absolutely. Swinging the momentum there. We'd love to see it. That's all you need. Just one thing. He's working to his advantages there. No striking. Just going straight for it. Let's see what happens from now. It seems like they're both staggered. Oh, oh, it's a, oh, it looks like it might be a competition of strikes right here. Oh, never mind. Oh, here we go. Stiff forearm straight from Jet Marshall. And a, oh, look at that. He's dropped him down to one knee. Oh, that is a rare sight indeed. Definitely for sure. Oh, he loves a kick. I could feel that, and I'm sure my family would as well. Oh, another kick. He's straight onto the ropes there. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, a beautiful backhand from Jet Marshall. That shades of John Jones right there. Let's see. And again, oh, look at that. Oh, 
Mm, roundhouse kick and a German suplex right onto Jet. Oh, Shining Wizard right there. That is a beautiful move, I must say. Oh, he's getting himself psyched up here. He's getting ready. It looks like he's going to go for the finish. Let's see what happens. He's going to run in. Boom! Maybe the strike. Maybe I was wrong. His strikes are looking very, very hard hitting and promising. Let's see what happens. Is he going to go for it? Oh! Beautiful corner drop kick right onto Jet Marshall right there. That was textbook right there. Let's see what he's going for now. He's on the apron. Is he going to pop up for the springboard? He is. Into the drop kick. Great stuff there. Big fire out. He's, he's definitely fired up. Being on the receiving end of those strikes, I am not surprised. He looks like he's getting himself up for the cyber kick right here. Is Jack going to be on the receiving end? No, he catches it. Oh, and a jumping knee right into his jaw. That's going to knock somebody for sure. I think it might be over now. He's, he's not yeah. done, he's not done. Oh. Bit of a spirit. One, two, oh. Just a two there oh. for a moment. Oh. I thought it was all oh. over with. Oh. You can see the shock on Jet's face. He was not expecting him to kick oh. out. He was expecting that to be the finish right there. He's yeah. going to have to work harder. Oh, kicks oh. right into oh. his face. Oh, oh. oh. down to his arm oh. there. Clearly trying to weaken him down even more. Definitely, for sure, if you take away the arm. <laughs> Jet Marshall not caring whatsoever whether there is children here, whether there are families here, he does not care whatsoever. Immediately answered, going for the cyber kick once more. Oh, look at that beautiful stuff. Let's see who can capitalize on this moment. Well, excusing the uh, wardrobe malfunction earlier on Jet Marshall's end, this has been a beautiful textbook match right here from two very talented individuals. Oh, what's this? Oh, straight onto the corner, knocking Jay Vertigo down. Oh, that's, that's a nasty fall right there. Certainly is efficiency once again. Let's see what Jet Marshall's going to go for now. I've seen him in this place before. Is he going to go for what I think he's going for? No, baseball slides under. Into the cyber kick, look at that. His beautiful placement right there from Jay Vertigo. He's doing what he does best and he's going for a suicide dive straight onto Jet Marshall. The house is being brought down, maybe quite literally after that one, hitting the wall. Is he setting up for it? Is he? He's setting up for... The future splash. It is the future splash, just as you said right there. And it is all over. Great performance there by Jay Vertigo. Absolutely wonderful stuff. It's almost Hitman-like. It's like as if he's waiting for his target. He's setting him up for the right moment. Either that, or maybe he's just considering whether or not he wants to put them into the freezer or into a cupboard once he's finished with them. Well, I cannot comment on that, but clearly he's got thoughts on his shoes right here, and not positive ones. But clearly, the crowd's behind these orange shoes right here. Indeed, indeed. Well, we see them locking up right now. Jockeying for position, and... Luca Blake seems to be on the uh, losing end of this. We'll see if they get a clean break, of all things. A clean break, but clearly with savage intentions right there. You catch him off guard. This is just a feeling out process right here. Oh, and lock up again into the corner again. Oh, not so clean a break this time. Not so clean a break. Not so clean. Not necessarily the cleanest of breaks, but still. That's out of order. I don't think that uh, this is going to be a recurring theme for Luca Blake. What would you say that um, Orange Shoes here has to do to be able to pull out the victory in this against someone who has such savage int- Oh! Nice push off from Shoes. Oh, and a beautiful drop kick, but what do you think he needs to do to be able to pull out the victory in this match? Well, I think the audience spoke for, for me uh, in that regard. Just use the shoes. <laughs> use the shoes indeed. He's got him in the corner. He's got him set up. What is it? Oh, never mind. Oh, he's got him in a headlock. A very tight one as well. Oh, he's bouncing off the ropes. He's running the ropes now. Oh, and a beautiful shoulder block from Maxwell right there. Indeed. And uh, Maxwell 
back and over. Whoa, what's this? Oh, oh. Pierce, they have to uh, tie shoelaces. Yes. It's one of the problems, unfortunately. The key weakness of the Arden shoes is the laces seem to get untied. But it didn't seem to uh, affect his uh, ability to uh, hit, hit Maxwell in the, in the face. But there's a drop toe hold. Oh, he's going for a hold right there. Oh, he's a beautiful submission right there. He's got him, he's got him quite far away from the ropes as well. It's a beautiful placement. Indeed, it's probably the uh, best placement, but Maxwell uh, makes it to the ropes. Uh, having to drag himself across there. He's a lot of tenacity right there to be able to get himself to the ropes and endure the pain of that hold, which for, for someone who seems to be quite a nice person, it was quite a brutal hold. Oh, it missed the kick right there, that beautiful kick. I think that probably would have been the end of uh, J of uh, Maxwell if uh, if that had connected. Oh, I agree. And I think from that comment alone, he's made it aware that he knew he could have been finished off from that. I do agree with you. This might be what some authors refer to as being foreshadowing. Definitely foreshadowing right there. Although I'm, I'm surprised that he's just... Orange Shoes is just standing there. He's waiting for him to come back into... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Oh, there we go. Oh. Stunner on the ropes. Oh! oh. Smashed his foot right onto the ring apron, the hardest part of the of the ring. What? Well, besides the uh, the corner turnbuckles, the steel turnbuckles, or well, turnpost, excuse me. Oh! Clearly using the environment to his advantage, and that is one of his tactics that I've usually seen him do in the ring. He does use the environment to his advantage. Any good wrestler knows uh, a thousand and one holds, but uh, even the most uh, rudimentary of wrestlers know that uh, the ring can be a weapon in and of itself. Absolutely, you've got your just right there when he banged his foot against the uh, canvas itself. Exactly, you can use the ropes, you can use the ring posts, even though you're not really supposed to as part of the rules, but clearly rules are not on the mind of Maxwell right here. Yeah. Rules were meant to be broken as the old saying goes, you know, win if you can, cheat if you must, well, win if you can, lose if you must, cheat, but always cheat. I, that's the I believe that's expression, but either way. I, 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 I'm sure I know exactly what you were going for there, and going for those shoes earlier, trying to rip them off. Clearly, he, 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 either he's trying to get inside the head of his opponent, or in shoes, or he genuinely believes that those shoes are a source of his power. Sometimes, you know, perception is half the battle. Oh. Though even even if perception wasn't half the battle, uh, Luca Blake's uh, inability to now do his uh, his signature bicycle kick will be uh, hindered definitely by uh, by uh, Jack Maxwell uh, Jack Maxwell's uh, relentless assault on the legs of Luca Blake. Oh yeah, I do agree. It looks like he's going to go for something else here, but he's very smart and calculating in knowing that he to take out his opponent, he needs to take out the legs. And if he takes out the legs, he takes him out, and he can potentially win this match. This may be a victory for him if he if his opponent can't pull it out of the bag. Yeah, and God only knows what will happen to Luca Blake. We may never see him again if uh, Jacob uh, Jake uh, Maxwell manages to uh, manage to do exactly just that. Beautiful form, striking the corner, running off the ropes. Oh, going for the leg again. Um, if, he's, if his opponent isn't careful, he may very well need to go to hospital after this if he keeps putting more and more damage onto it. Yeah. Um, we're lucky in some respects that we're not all that far away from the accident and emergency, but even then, nobody wants to spend four hours in the middle of uh, A&E, uh, in the middle of Sheffield. But it looks like uh, Maxwell might be putting uh, Luca Blake on a straight collision course with that. Oh! And he might not be with that foot if he gets uh, a few more of those foots. Oh! He telegraphed it that time. Oh, and a beautiful, beautiful brat breaker right there onto the canvas. Yeah, just impaled him with that. Oh, but, but a kick out at two. Even I'm surprised. I thought that well, that would have been the end right there. Absolutely. <sighs> Our capacity audience here in uh, Sheffield are behind Luca Blake in his orange shoes. It looks like he's going to set up. Oh, beautiful forearm strike right into the side of his head. Oh, what a kip up right up. And he's all fired up. He's ready to go. The orange shoes are giving him a, a second wind. Two, two. Beautiful.
Baseball placement strikes right there. Got him backed up into the corner. Clearly adrenaline pushing him through. The shoes are almost supernatural in the way that they are able to... I don't even have the words to describe this. They're, they're, I've never seen anyone make a comeback like this since, well, I think we know who. Oh, I think we know who indeed, but he's got him set up in the corner right there, throwing him over to the other side. Nice Irish whip. Oh, but he aimed for the leg again. Again, he's going for the leg. A smart play on his end, even if I don't entirely condone it. Oh! Flatliner straight there. And I think Luca Blake may have just been flatlined with that. We'll see. Two. And he kicks out. I... That's the second time. It may well be that those shoes are giving him the power he needs to keep going. But that just leaves a question. What does Maxwell have to do to put this match away if he keeps getting up all the time? The look on Maxwell's face, uh, he is beside himself. He seems to be frustrated that uh, every single ars every move that he has in his arsenal has been, has been unable to put Luca Blake away. It looks to be setting up for some sort of un double underhook, but Luca Blake is fighting back with oh kick to the face with his orange shoes he's doing he's doing well to fight back he's going up to the top rob now i wonder what he's got in store for him oh 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 and a beautiful cross body from the top oh but kicks out at two he's very lucky to get out of that indeed indeed and i'm just noticing that look of like shoes are untied this may this may prove to be to his detriment, though it, having said that, it didn't uh, exactly st hamper his ability to uh, perform earlier on. As if the uh, way that uh, Maxwell has been able to work over his legs steadily over the course of this match. Oh, the bicycle kick. Oh, dirty you, deeds. A beautiful dirty deeds right there. And he got the victory. That is unexpected, but well, congratulations to the victor. Maxwell! Good evening. My name is James Young. Well, that's to say afternoon, shouldn't I? I kind of screwed up there. Anyway, uh, good afternoon. Right, I'm going to do a special segment here for you guys in Sheffield tonight. So, coming into the ring, he is the king. When... Music, music man, he's the music, music, music man, he's the music, music, music man, he's the music, music, music man, music, music, music man, he's the music, music, music man, he's the music, music, a music man, he's the music, music, music man. Show you how to rock and roll, baby. Let me hear you say where. No. <laughs> when I said king, I meant king of Sheffield, not you. You're talking about the king, the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley? Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Are you hard of hearing? Well, I've been a drummer for about 15 years, 25 years, so a little bit, a little bit, man, but the king is the king. He will always be the king of rock and roll. I meant the king of Sheffield, not you for the second time. <laughs> we were Elvis. Man, Elvis is from Memphis, not Sheffield. We're getting there. You, idiot in the second row, watch your tongue. I'll have it cut from your head. This is the disrespect that I refer to every time I am pressed in front of you morons. Idiots like this calling himself the king. 
You are not the king. I am the king. I am the king, not just a king. You call yourself a king, the king of rock and roll, whatever you want to call yourself. You're not it. You are not it. I'm the Lion King. You're nothing but the Lion King. You are a fraud, just like each and every single one of these people. I am the realest man that you've ever been in the ring with. You've put yourself in the ring with the realest man you have ever seen. I am going to leave this ring today. I'm going to walk down to the job centre and pick up my doll money and keep scrounging off of each and every single one of these morons. I didn't test for COVID before I came here. I don't care if I pass it on to you. Hey, that's enough. See, tomorrow I'm going to go walk straight into Tesco without a mask. I said it. I'm going to walk straight onto the bus because I don't drive. I'm not com contributing to society. I'm going to walk onto a bus without a mask. And you know what I'm going to do? Ask me what I'm going to do if they tell me to wear a mask. I'll tell them I'm exempt. I don't care. I'll tell them I'm exempt. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to do it. I'm not conforming to society. You see, PPW, it's all about a group. It's about a cult. It's about conforming. It's not why I'm here. This is why you're here. You call yourself the king. It makes me sick. I call myself the king because I'm the realest man that you have ever been around. Any, I'm the realest man that any of these people have ever seen. I am the undisputed, undefeated king of Sheffield. You are a moron. You've already proved, you call yourself the king of rock and roll, you've already proved you can't sing. I'll even hazard a guess. I'll even hazard a guess that you can't even play the guitar. You're a fraud. You're nothing but a fraud and I am done here. Hey, just wait a minute before you go down there. Let me tell you something for sure, man. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I'm not the king. There's only one king up there, and I never said I was a king. He'll always be the king of rock and roll. Elvis Presley, not that damn thing to do it, I'll tell you. Yeah. I don't even think you got a musical bone in that body of yours. Elvis Presley wasn't even that good. Oh. <laughs> Called himself the king of rock and roll. He was a fraud as well. Man, I can tell you something for sure as well. Look at all this you're wearing. Look at all these diamonds on here, you see. What the hell did you get that from? Because I saw Elvis Presley wear something exactly like that. Oh. And I'll tell you something for sure. You ain't no goddamn Santa Claus in that either. <laughs> goddamn Krampus here tonight. You, you see again, you bring up Santa Claus, you bring up another fraud. He's the biggest fraud of them all. This season's a sham. You're a sham. They're a sham. Don't even get me started on Santa Claus. I am not above it. I'm not above it. I'll say it. And I'll tell them said, all. What you said about PPW meaning nothing, it means everything. Look at these people here tonight. It's something you will never have. You may be the king of this, you may be the king of that when it comes to wrestling. But if you want to be the king of everybody in here and the king of the people out there, you got to work a goddamn lot harder than that, I can tell you for sure. Yeah. By the way, I play the guitar real well. Now, Dave, I just got one more thing to say to you. I apologize for coming out here and interrupting and getting mistaken there. I thought there was a calling for me, so I came out here. But I just got to ask you one more thing. But let me hear you say, well... All right, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Absolutely not! Oh. 
can't sing, you can't play guitar, none of these people believe in anything that you're saying, and they're all frauds as well. You're a fraud, she's a fraud, they're a fraud, I don't care. You can't do anything that you say you can, you just say it to make your own boring, insignificant life better than it is. for the one more round championship and it's your main event for this evening. And here we are at the main event, ladies and gentlemen, at Pursuit Pro Wrestling, where it is a fatal four-way for the one more round championship right there. Oh. And Alice Barker clearly pointing himself out as the next champion after Aiden Sparks. But it remains to be seen. What do you think, Radu, who's here on commentary again with me? Thank you for joining us. Honestly, I don't think uh, it's uh, that's really the case. I think Alice just wanted to take it back to, this, to his council estate to show off to his girlfriend. But then again, I don't know him. Um, we do have a very good selection of uh, competitors here. A gentleman, Jim McGuire, who I'm pretty certain I might have seen at a circus I went to with a gypsy girl. But that's, and that's no story that needs to be told. Um, we also have uh, the uh, train conductor, uh, Clayton Andrews, who had probably the most uh, loudest entrance that we've had here. Next to, of course, uh, Fari Aiden Sparks. Uh, the less you say about my dancing, the better, and the longer that you'll live, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. Well, it seems like we're about ready to start here and waiting for the bell from our referee. Oh, it seems like even before the match has started, the disrespect is still flowing. I don't know what you've come out. Are you like some kind of Oscar? Train conductor. Train conductor. It's a train conductor. Yes, he is a train conductor, though. Considering the kind of circles that Ellis walks in, I think he can probably make his own assumptions. And he probably ex almost expects that uh, gentleman Jim McGuire is probably going to try and set... Well, I think that uh, slap to the face probably has uh, made plenty of... Uh... I'm sorry, just that was genuinely very funny. <laughs> well, it was well deserved as well. You do not touch a gentleman's moustache in gentleman Jim McGuire is, and clearly they all agree, throwing Ellis out of the ring. It seems like they're all coming after him. And you're surprised he's disrespected every single one of them. Uh, I think the only time that uh, Ellis Barker has had been mugged by three people like this before is probably when he said the wrong thing to the wrong type of people on his uh, on his council estate. Uh, let's be let's but let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, Aiden, I've never seen Aiden Sparks uh, hit anyone as uh, as viciously as he did just then. Oh, this one is breaking down very quickly and. It seems like that steel ring post is uh, getting a fair share of heads being thrown into it tonight. And here we have gentleman Jim Maguire and uh, Clayton Andrews going one-on-one -on -one with each other. We're having the most, I will not quite to say unorthodox uh, wrestling gear. But then again, uh, gentleman Jim Maguire, this is probably just a regular Saturday night for him. I would agree with you right there, but let's not forget Clayton Andrews, as much as he's wearing that flashy gear, don't take away from the fact that he's a very experienced technical wrestler right there. And I've seen him in action before, he knows what he's doing, but right now it's Jim McGuire who is on top with that shoulder block right there. So the gentleman Jim McGuire giving the very old school uh, wrestling style here. Um, Going straight over from Leaper and missed the clothesline by Clayton Andrews. Block of the hip toss by gentleman Jim McGuire. A reversal attempt by Jim McGuire. Another reversal. Uh, seems to be a recurring theme here. Deja vu. 
deja vu. They seem to be telegraphing each other a bit too well here. Are we Clayton and dancing or are we wrestling? Well, I would hope you were wrestling in that ring, but Clayton Andrews is known for his dancing. And this is not the type of dancing that we expected here. I mean, <laughs> Ellis Barker on the outside. Dempsey's isn't open on Sunday. <laughs> I, oh, oh, it seems like he finally got him over. Maybe it was all just a sense of misdirection. Just a sense of misdirection from Clayton Andrews, who was here to make his mark. I mean, after all, this isn't just a, a fatal four-way. This is a fatal four-way for a championship belt opportunity right here. Exactly, and now Ellis Barker and uh, Clayton Andrews now. And Well, Ellis has uh, had an eyeful of uh, exactly everything that uh, he saw there, and I don't think he wanted to see it again from uh, Clayton Andrews' part. But now he is going for the O'Connor roll-up. Only gets a two, Clayton, Clayton Andrews. Whoop, gets rolled up in a sunset flip, and in comes Aiden Sparks, breaks up the pinfall. Well telegraphed on Aiden Sparks, and oh, and here we go, it's Sparks versus Ellis Barker, and here we go, nice flip toss right there. He's got him up again, oh, he's going for the scoop slam, and he hits it right there, onto Ellis Barker. One, two, three, just a fire, just as uh, Aiden Sparks likes it. Uh, Although it appears a gentleman, Jim McGuire, uh, prefers that uh, they keep uh, candlelight uh, put out, uh, at, least, at least at this time, because we are still on technical and daylight savings. Uh, gentleman Jim McGuire sent to the outside by Ellis Barker. Clayton Andrews, head of steam, goes onto the apron. Well, I would say this isn't a Royal Rumble. This isn't Royal Rumble, but clearly he's got a plan in mind right here. Oh yeah, Ellis Barker, known for his uh, high-risk uh, maneuvers. We might see one right here. Whoa! Big flying crossbody to the outside takes out all three of his uh, opponents. I will say this is, an, this is an interesting match because you have four very different styles of wrestlers right here. Like you said earlier, Jim McGuire, a very old-school kind of wrestler. Clayton Andrews, very technical. Ellis Barker, hard-hitting but also high-flying. And as for Aiden Sparks, well, it's, it's Aiden Sparks. Yeah, it's Aiden Sparks. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Oh, what the hell is going on here? Oh, no, referee Sandy. Well, yes. referee Sandy just came off the top rope. And that's what, I'll be honest with you. That's one way to restore order to a, to a match. I suppose it's one way, but it's rather an orthodox way. But I can't say he didn't go well over with the crowd right here, who's who's definitely setting her authority more than most would in wrestling. Yeah, hell hath no no fury like a woman scorned, especially especially when she's uh, a woman like referee Sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy getting a standing ovation right here from the crowd, uh, quite rightly. I mean, now they're in the ring, they're finally doing wrestling, they're finally competing for the match properly. Here we go. An uppercut from Jim McGuire to Clayton. Then Sparks knocked out Jim McGuire. Alice Barker got. Oh, it's just breaking down here. I can't keep up at this point. Yeah, fast place explosion of moves, a shotgun blast of uh, moves in a series of just uh, less than 10 seconds. And now, and now it looks like Ellis Barker is going to be on the receiving end of a, uh, of a terrible looking uh, contraption of a move and this cannot end well for anyone, Ellis Barker least of all. I think Ellis Barker knows, he's turned to crying saying oh no, Maguire and Andrews have got him up, it looks like they're going for a suplex from the top rope, an avalanche suplex, oh, what was this? Oh, Aiden Sparks getting himself involved. Oh, oh my god, no, no, no. They can't do this. Oh, no! And he takes them down just from pushing them off the top right there and knocking all three of the competitors out. He's very smart play from Sparks on his end. Never underestimate Aiden Sparks. He is a lot... He is, he is wise beyond his years. He's definitely wise beyond his years. And he definitely knows an opportunity when he sees it. Oh, but kick out of two. He looks like he's going to see if maybe one of them will be out for it so he can get the pin. One, two, oh, and another two count on Clayton Andrews. It's Aiden systematically going through every single one of the competitors just to see which one he might be able to score a pinfall on. But third time is unfortunately not a charm. No, it is not, but it is a very smart play. After all, all three of them are down. He can see if any of them were going to stay out, but now he knows he needs to work just that little bit harder. He knows that the match is a, a while to go yet. Unquestionably, unquestionably. At this point, 
Oh. Oh. Hammerlock DDT. It looks like at this point everyone's going to have to be emptying their arsenal of moves out One, onto the opposition. Two, Hopefully, at least in that case, gentleman Jim Maguire was able to break the uh, pinfall. Jim Maguire going for... Oh! A very large slam and... Oh, he may be going for a second rope uh, of Vader bomb-like manoeuvre. Broken up by Ellis Barker. He's definitely telegraphed that well on both ends. First from Jim McGuire breaking up the pin on, from Sparks and Ellis Barker onto Jim McGuire. He's got him up. Oh, he's got him for a driver right there. He's going for the pin. But it looks like... Oh, but Andrew breaks up the pin. How long can this go on? Eventually, someone's going to run out of moves or someone is eventually not going to have the stamina enough to be able to break up a pinfall. And there's a fisherman suplex by and and Clayton Andrews. Sorry, this is getting very fast. Uh, Aiden Sparks, now the one in control, looks to be. What's he doing here? Oh. Oh. Spark out right onto gentleman Jim McGuire using. And he gets the win. That was. Oh. It looks like Ellis Barker had a plan, but it was too late. It was too late. Oh, coming in with the cane, but Aiden Sparks able to retain on this night against three rather worthy competitors, I must say, just from that display right there. Absolutely.